I want to look at using these I2S MEMS microphone modules. I have two of them to try out. And I'm also going to look at this I2S DAC PCM5102A. So the idea is I can put one microphone on the left, another one on the right channel of the digital audio, and send it out as stereo audio. And I'm also generally still working on audio using the ESP32's built-in DAC in this phone line simulator project. So I'm generally always on the lookout for other Arduino libraries that can generate tones or playback recorded sample files. So I'm also going to take a look at this Arduino audio tools library I just started experimenting with. It's got a lot of capabilities, but one of its goals is to try to simplify audio within the Arduino platform. So it can support a bunch of audio sources that you can get audio from, including a microphone over I2S or a regular analog input port, generated sound within software, played back from an SD card or from program memory and so on even taken from an internet stream. And you can send audio out to a bunch of targets as well. So in one of these examples, you define where audio is coming from and where you want it to go. In this case, it's coming from a memory stream and it's going out to an I2S DAC. And then you set up a stream to take the incoming audio and send it to the outgoing audio. And it takes care of itself with basically one line of code in the main loop. And there's a lot of other libraries that may need to be installed depending what features are being used. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is generate a couple of sine wave audio tones that I can use to make a DTMF dial tone if I were to use this in a phone line simulator. So this library would be installed in addition to the other audio tools library for that. This can generate or play back audio. And I took one of the demo sketches, which has two sine waves and plays them together. And for now, I'm not using the external I2S DAC. I'm using the built-in ESP32 DAC, GPIO 25 and 26. So we use the analog audio stream from the library as our output target. Then we're using this library to generate two sine waves as our audio source. Then the generated audio goes out to this GPIO 25 DAC. So using the built-in DAC, I need a way to plug in an audio cable on this GPIO and ground to get the sound out. And to make that easier, I made this little 3.5 millimeter tip ring ring sleeve audio jack breakout board with today's sponsor, PCB Way. I have a bunch of these PJ320A through hole as well as PJ320D surface mount versions of this four pin jack, which I used in other PCB projects. But for breadboard experimenting, I thought it would be helpful if I could have a simple board like this and then whichever jacks I have in stock at the time, I can just populate on here and use it in audio projects. So a dial tone in North America consists of a 440 hertz and a 350 hertz tone being played together. So I set that up here, copied it to both the left and the right as a mono signal. And it is loud, so I scaled it down by multiplying it by 0.2 on each sine wave. Then when I just run this sketch, it generates the dial tone. With the audio jack connected to GPIO 25 and 26 and then ground, I can get the left and right audio into the audio cable. Now to get the MEMS microphones and the external I2S DAC working, going back to this library, looking at all of the many examples, if we look at the stream examples, I went with this one. It streams from I2S to I2S. So that means I can use my audio source as I2S microphones and the output audio an external DAC over I2S. Looking at these microphone modules, we have power and ground. This can run at 3.3 volts. Then we have these four other control pins. So they can be named different things on different modules. So this one has word select, 
clock and data, and then there's this left-right channel select. Depending if you tie this high or low, this mono microphone will send its audio either on the left or on the right. On this other module we have as well a left-right control, word select, a serial clock, and serial data, and then power ground. So those two modules have similar naming conventions. We won't go into what is I squared S audio. It's a communication protocol from the 80s for sending or receiving audio data, basically. But here's the three main signals. We have our serial clock and the actual audio data, similar to an SPI bus. But then this word select is used to differentiate whether the data is belonging to the left or the right channel in a stereo setup. The serial clock can also be called bit clock, and this word select can also be called left-right clock or frame sync. When it's low, it means the data belongs to the left channel, and when it's a 1, it belongs to the right channel. And some devices have a fourth line, which is a master clock. It's not part of the I2S standard, but it may exist for some useful purposes on certain devices. Now if we look at this I2S DAC, this has a lot more pins. Going along the narrow edge, that first pin, SCK, that would be the master clock, which is optional. But we do need to do something with it, so we're going to disable it by tying it to ground, and then the chip will just generate its own internal serial clock. Then we just have the other three standard I2S pins, the bit clock, the data, and then the word select or left to right clock. Then we just have power ground. And I did not do anything with those other pins along the long edge. Some of those are the audio output, if not using the onboard jack. And then there's a few more control pins, but you can see those surface mount jumpers called H1L through H4L, and that lets some of those pins be connected to VCC or ground to do some configuration of this DAC. But the defaults are okay for what I'm doing. I found this online question where somebody else was trying to figure out how do you set this thing up. So one of the answers here gives all the details that I needed. Those four surface mount configuration pads are detailed here. And that master clock pin can be tied to zero volts to disable using it. Then there's description of what these features actually do. So I found this helpful. And here's the sketch that I ended up tweaking from the library examples. So on my breadboard setup, one of these microphones has the LR tied high, and the other one will have it tied low so that the other three I2S data and clock pins all get connected in parallel, and automatically one microphone will talk on the left channel and one will talk on the right, and it takes care of itself. So in the sketch I have an incoming and outgoing I2S audio stream, and I'm copying whatever data is coming in on the input I2S over to the output DAC I2S. For the input, I'm receiving I2S data in, and there's two physical I2S channels on the ESP32, so I'm just assigning channel 0 to be the microphone channel, and you can choose whatever pins you want. So I'm setting up the bit clock, word select, and data on these three pins for the two microphone modules in parallel. And we have to transmit out on the other I2S channel number one to get to the DAC. And these are the bit clock, word select, and data pins I decided to hook up to. So then when the sketch is running, it just goes and does whatever actions are needed to be streaming from the microphone in to the DAC out. Standing two feet above both microphones being centered, now down close to the left one a foot away, more centered and moving toward the right a foot away. I'll be looking more into the other features of this Audio Tools library. It has a lot of possibilities. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this project.